Russian oligarchs may want to bail out Donald Trump. Amid Donald Trump's growing debt among his legal cases, Russian oligarchs may want to bail out the former president, according to U.S. national security lawyer Mary McCord. Newsweek reports about this. It is noted that in an interview with MSNBC, McCord, who previously served as acting assistant attorney general for national security at the Department of Justice, was asked by host Simone Sanders Townsend if Trump's financial exposure poses a national security risk. Yes, we are talking about how difficult it might be for him to post this near half a billion dollar bond, but he has certainly plenty of people who might want to bail him out on that. Some of those might be foreign, some of those might be Russian oligarchs, some of those might be people right here in the US, McCord said. McCord added that Trump's fondness of Russian President Vladimir Putin is also cause for concern, saying that there may be other countries that see the possibility of Trump becoming president as a way to earn favors from him. Anytime you are talking about someone who is running for president or holding any elected office and potentially could have some indebtedness or feeling of owing somebody else something, that's very dangerous. Particularly here, as we know his fondness for Putin, his continuing praise of Putin and the way he governs Russia and that's something I could very much see people there who have the means to help him out. There's plenty of other countries that would like to get some favors from Donald Trump should he become the president again, she said. Iran-backed Houthis preparing for long war with US, UK and Israel in Red Sea. Yemen's Houthis, backed by Iran, are preparing for a long war with the United States of America and its allies in the Red Sea, regardless of how the war between Israel and Hamas militants plays out, reports Bloomberg. It is reported that the Yemen-based group is strengthening its military and defense capabilities to continue attacking ships in the important waterway. According to the sources, the Houthis are strengthening mountain shelters for safer and more effective missile launches and are testing unmanned vessels above and below water. Meanwhile, Saudi Arabia, which borders Yemen and has been at war with the Houthis for most of the past decade, is particularly concerned that the Houthis could damage key internet cables that run along the seabed. At the same time, the publication notes that there is currently no suggestion of such a plan or that the Houthis have the means to implement it. Houthis have announced they have banned vessels linked to Israel, the United States and United Kingdom from sailing in surrounding seas as the rebels seek to reinforce their military campaign, which they say is in support of Palestinians in Gaza. The Houthis Humanitarian Operations Coordination Center sent formal notices of the ban to shipping insurers and firms operating in the region. The Houthis communication, the first to the shipping industry outlining a formalized ban in the Red Sea, the Gulf of Aden and the Arabian Sea, came in the form of two notices. It affects vessels wholly or partially owned by Israeli, American and British individuals or entities, as well as those sailing under their flags. The warning came amid continuing Houthi attacks that have disrupted international trade on the shortest shipping route between Europe and Asia and counter-attacks by US and British forces hoping to deter the rebels. Since November of last year, attacks by the Yemeni Houthis on commercial vessels connected to Israel have continued in the Red Sea. North Korea has sent more than 10,000 containers of munitions materials to Russia. North Korea has shipped over 10,000 containers of munitions or munition-related materials to Russia since September, the State Department of the US said, as Moscow strives to replenish its weapons stockpile for use in Ukraine. The department pointed out the arms transactions and the Treasury Department together announced sanctions against more than 500 individuals and entities to ensure accountability for Russia's ongoing war against Ukraine and the death of the Russian opposition leader Alexei Navalny. Since September 2023, North Korea has delivered more than 10,000 containers of munitions or munitions-related materials to Russia, the department said in a fact sheet. In the latest sanctions package, the department designated two additional entities involved in the transfer of munitions from the north to Russia. 
They are a Russian firm that manages a terminal at Vostochny port in the Russian Far East and a naval facility near Vladivostok. The White House has said that in addition to munitions, the North also provided Russia with several dozen ballistic missiles, some of which were fired against Ukraine. Observers have expressed worries that the North's arms support for Russia could contribute to prolonging the war in Ukraine, while what in return Moscow might have given to Pyongyang could further undermine security on the Korean peninsula.